What are some of the characteristics of the uh, Dajjal? Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned that Dajjal shall be physically deformed. And a number of things are mentioned about him. Most prominently, the fact that one or both of his eyes is deformed. Our scholars have deferred, is it right or left? But uh, in, in all likelihood, it, it's really one eye. And so one eye will be festered. One eye will be basically like a floating grape or a festered grape, as our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. Of the hadith as well about the descriptions of the Dajjal, as we said, is that anybody who has an ounce of Iman will recognize the Dajjal because they shall see the word Kafir written on his forehead. And our Prophet ﷺ said, the illiterate person will read it just as well as the literate person. Of the things mentioned about the Dajjal, our Prophet ﷺ said, the Dajjal shall have no children. Aqimun la yuladu lahu. And of the characteristics, he shall claim to be the Messiah, and then he shall claim to be the Rabb himself. So there's going to be a coming bigger and bigger of his claims. Of the things that are mentioned as well about the Dajjal is that he shall walk with crooked legs. His legs will be basically uh, not straight legs. So another deformity that he will not be walking normally. All of these are meant to emphasize as well that the Dajjal is a person who has physical imperfections and yet in his arrogance he is claiming to be God himself, to be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In one hadith in Tirmidhi, our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the Dajjal will come from an eastern land that is called Khurasan. And groups of people will follow him. They will be as if their faces are hammered out shields. Hammered out shields. So a shield that has been hammered out, i.e. a flat face. Our Prophet said, and the hadith is in Musnad Imam Ahmad, and it is a Hassan hadith, that the Jal will come from a city called Isfahan. So it is mentioned by name from the Yehud of the city of Isfahan, and many of his followers will be from that city. 70,000 of the Yehud of Isfahan will be his followers. And therefore, we see from this that the Dajjal, his background will be from the Bani Israel. And many of his followers will be from the Bani Israel. And in another hadith, it is mentioned that he shall come between the lands of Iraq and Sham. So how do we reconcile? He shall come from Isfahan and he shall come between Iraq and Asham. And our scholars have said that he will first appear, his first claim will be in Isfahan. But he will get global attention between Iraq and Asham. So there's going to be levels of his appearing outward. There's going to be levels of claiming. And his first claim will be in Isfahan. In the land of Iran is Isfahan. Also we learn in the authentic hadith that the Dajjal will come at a time of great chaos, bloodshed, hunger, starvation, and he will provide his followers safety and security. This explains why so many people will follow the Dajjal. You see, Alhamdulillah, most of us have never been hungry to the point of us going almost mad. We don't understand. When you are hungry, you lose rationale. When you cannot feed yourself or your children, you will do desperate things. May Allah protect us from ever seeing that day. The people of that time frame will be tested by trial, war, bloodshed, hunger, starvation. Here comes a man who appears to be powerful in terms of his army who will grant you safety and security if you are on his side. Our Prophet ﷺ said, He will command the skies to rain and they will rain. Our Prophet ﷺ said, He will distribute bread and food. One of his signs, He will be giving food left, right and center at a time of starvation. He will demand his followers believe in him first as the Messiah and many of them will. When they believe in him as the Messiah, he will then up the notch. He will then raise the bar, or we should say lower the bar. And he will say, I am your God. I provide your food for you. I provide your drink for you. I give you safety and security. And so his followers will then take him as a God. Our Prophet ﷺ said, 
that he will have the shayateen at his disposal. So the shayateen will do things at his command. And the shayateen are able to do what we are not able to do. The jinn are faster than us, stronger than us, and they're invisible. That's it. And the Dajjal will appear to be a very powerful, supernatural person. In reality, he simply has some of the tricks and trades of the jinn. It is also possible that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test the people by giving the Dajjal one or two issues that others do not have. Just like Allah has given shaitan himself. And that is a long life, right? No human being has that. So it is possible that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give Dajjal certain privileges and powers that are a test to him and are a test to those who follow him and will be a sign of iman for those who reject him. And of them is the power and the capability to cause the sky to rain because jinns don't have that power. Jinns cannot cause the skies to rain. Only Allah can do that, right? As well, he will have the power to at least once, maybe, maybe more, but the minimum is once. He will have the power to resurrect the dead. And that is another thing that he resembles with the true Masih, and that is Isa ibn Maryam. That's why he is the false Masih. There are certain things in common, but Isa ibn Maryam said, worship Allah, and Dajjal says, worship me. That's why he is Dajjal. So the Prophet ﷺ warned us that he will have tricks and trades. He also said he will have with him Jannah and Nar. Some have said it literally means a fire and a garden. Some have said it means he will come with what appears to be blessings and lots of punishment. Both are allowed here because Jannah represents money and fruits and you know sustenance and Nar represents punishments and torture. So our Prophet ﷺ said, realize his pleasures are actually his torture. And what you think are his tortures are actually Jannah. So if one of you sees it and cannot escape, the Prophet ﷺ said, he should jump into the punishments and that will save him. Also, our Prophet ﷺ described the Dajjal as being Ahmar. The Arabs of old, they would call what we call in modern vernacular Caucasian, the term white was not any generally abiyad wasn't used to describe skin color. As well, the Prophet said that uh, he, his hair will be curly. Ja'ad. Ja'ad is curly hair. His hair will be curly. He also described him as being relatively short. He also described him as being broad chested. So these are all descriptions that are given of the uh, Dajjal. And wherever he goes, he will gather more and more followers and he will gain a very, very large army. Now we also learn from, and this is not explicit, but it's inferred from the hadith of the Mahdi, that the forces of Dajjal and the Muslims will be fighting multiple battles. And the Muslims will be able to protect themselves partially, but they'll never be able to destroy the army of Dajjal. This is a very, very key point. That Dajjal will not be victorious in every battle, but he will be protected as a person. He will not be harmed by, or at least killed, Allah knows if he's going to be harmed, by anybody other than obviously who? Isa ibn Maryam. So it appears that there will be skirmishes, major wars, bloodshed. In some hadith it is mentioned out of 199 will die. So what happiness will the survivor have? When will that happen? With the Dajjal or before the Dajjal? We do not know. We do not know. There is going to be a massive war. The Prophet ﷺ said that the bird that is flying above will fall down dead. Is this nuclear war? Something like this. Again, these are all hadith that it's not too far-fetched to read in nuclear war, right? As the hadith mentions, he shall appear when someone provokes him. Which means in Isfahan, something's going to happen and he's just going to go berserk and ballistic and then realize he has these powers or jinns or shayateen that others don't have and then take it from there, take advantage of that and go from bad to worse, declare himself the Messiah, get his followers, eventually go ahead and declare himself God himself and all of this is going to grow worse and worse and worse. So all of these are the hadith of the uh, Dajjal.